Hey quilting friends, it's Carolina Moore here, award-winning quilter, pattern designer, and YouTuber, and I am here with something that we've been talking about for a couple months. It is the Cotton Cuts Puzzle Mystery Quilt, and they have sent me clue one. I haven't opened it yet. I did take off the label because I didn't need y'all to know my home address because um, I'm in hiding from the quilt police and I don't need the quilt police to come find me. So I just took off my address, but other than that, I haven't opened it yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and we're going to go through what's in here and we're gonna stitch up clue one. I'm super excited. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Cotton Cuts Puzzle Mystery Quilt, if you look down in the links below, I link to the intro video to this whole program and I also have a link for you to get signed up. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. There we go. All right, it looks like they've sent me one, two. Oh, it looks like I've gotten everything already. So I'll have this for all the future months. So to not spoil anything, I'm gonna pull everything out of the way, except bag number one. And this says, sew for the gold. And oh, there's some fabric in here. This little sew for the gold with some fabric, they sent me an email about this. And there is a contest going on to make some kind of project using these little fabric swatches. So if you are participating in the Cotton Cuts Puzzle Mystery Quilt, this is the Olympia version, um, find this in your packet and find the email that gives you the details on this little prize that they have going on because I don't know about you but I love a contest. Okay so this is the Nadia colorway. That's what I went with and so they're all art gallery fabrics. These are all Christmassy art gallery fabrics. This is the 2021 Fall Puzzle Mystery Quilt and Puzzle Mystery Tips and Tricks. So tips and tricks are to keep the swatch card that's on the back and that the printed grays on the shapes might necessarily correlate with the fabric colors, which is fine. The clues might not make an exact block. Always follow the pressing instructions. And you can get extra fabric from them. So I have my rotary cutter and ruler. I shouldn't need them for this project because everything is already pre-cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and set those aside. I'll have them handy just in case. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open my package number one. What do I have in here? Cotton Cut sent me some of their super cute pens. How cute are these? Love it. Definitely gonna use those. And they sent me all of the pre-cut fabric. Now I also have the instructions here. And these instructions are for the small Olympia Puzzle Mystery Quilt and I'm making it in the Nadia colorway. It should be fairly similar if you're making it in any of the other colorways. They did tell me that there was um, a little bit of a typo in the instructions that got put in packages. These are the correct instructions and if you got incorrect instructions you should have an email with the corrected instructions. But the images are all correct, there's just a little typo. So easy enough. Okay, I have all my pieces and it says section 1a. You'll be making four of the following sections. Two of these will be section 1a and the remaining two will be used to make section 1c. The following instructions tell you how to make all four sections at the same time. Join triangle F. Okay, so I have two different triangles. Join a triangle F to one side of a triangle A and press towards F. And then join another triangle F to the other side of triangle A. Make four. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab four of these. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay. 
and I'm going to stitch these on. There we go, and it's telling me specifically to press towards F. So I'm pressing towards here, and it shows on both sides to press towards F. There we go. So I've made four, and now I'm going to add an F to the other side of four, and I'm just gonna make sure that these get flipped so that they're right sides together. There we go. And I love how they have the dog ears already cut off, you can see right there, and also at the top, so everything just lines up. No cutting, worrying, just stitching and pressing, and I have my iron right next to my sewing machine, so this is quick and easy. So there we go, I have all my A's and my F's put together. Oh, there's a little thread. I'll have to trim that later, no big deal. And it says join square C, this is square C, to the left of step one and then press towards C. I'm making four, so I'm gonna grab four of these again. One, two, three, by the way, they do have the squaring up instructions. This is supposed to measure six and a half by three and a half. So if you have a really scant quarter inch seam, you might want to square up. But yeah, mine's pretty good. Could use a tiny touch of squaring up, but I'm gonna risk it with this one. See, this is why the help police are out to get me because I'm just gonna go ahead and risk it. But it's up to you. If you wanna stop at this point and square yours up to six and a half by three and a half, you go ahead and do that and feel just fine about it. So we're gonna go ahead and add our AFs to our C and then we'll have section 1A all done. Okay, so now I have my section 1A. Section 1B is making four of the following section. Two of these will be section 1B, and the remaining two will be used to make section 1C. The following instructions tell you how to make all four sections at the same time. Okay, so join triangle F to A. So I'm gonna do the same thing again with my four A triangles and my eight F triangles. And this time I'm going to add a C on the other side. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and knock these out real quick. Just stitch them, stitch my flying geese just like I did before, and press, and then add my C, this time on the right side instead of the left side. There we go, these are done, and this time I'm putting fabric, let's see, this one's fabric A, so this one's fabric C, there we go. Fabric C on the right-hand side of four of them, and that's gonna use all my fabric Cs. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch those. 
So I'm not squaring up in this video, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't. So to make sure the quilt police don't come after me too hard, if you click right over here, I have a video all about squaring up. It gives you all kinds of tips and tricks, my secrets from teaching block of the month quilts in quilt shops for several years. So click here and you'll learn all about squaring up because I'm not covering it in this video, but it can be very important and I generally square up. I'm just living a little wild this time. All right, so let's get these C pieces on the right hand side this time. So I have all these C's on the right hand side now, and I'm gonna go ahead and press those towards the C. So now I'm on to section 1C and it says I'll be making two of section 1C starting with a section set aside in step two of section 1A and 1B. So I've set aside two of these in section 1A and two of these in section 1B. There we go. So I'm going to join square A to the right of each section from 1A. So I'm going to add two of these, one to each, and then same here, but on the other side, and then I'm going to press towards my A fabric. Easy enough. Let's go ahead and stitch those and press them. Okay, so I have these units made and actually for it to match the diagram, I need my A fabric on the right, my C fabric on the left here, and my triangles coming together to make a square in the middle. And so now I'm going to use fabric D, and this has just been folded in half so that it fit in the envelope or the little, the little bag. So I'm gonna press this real quick to flat so that I've got a nice flat piece to work with and this is going to be sewn in the middle of a set of these. So I'll have two that look like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that step, starting of course by just giving these a quick press. Nice and smooth. There we go. So you can go ahead and press at this step, but you don't need to. You can just go ahead and stitch on the other side. You just want to make sure that you are stitching it the right way. So you have everything lined up so that it's stitching right. And then you can just stitch on your other side. And then you can press after both sides are stitched. So the only time you need to press is when you're going to stitch over an unpressed seam. So in this case, both our seams are parallel. This next seam isn't stitching over the one that I just did, so I don't need to press. You can if you want, it never hurts. Um, but I'm trying, especially if you don't have your iron right next to you and you're walking back and forth to your iron, sometimes it's nice to do two steps at once and then head over to your iron. Unless you're trying to get your steps in, in which case, go ahead and walk to the ironing board, press and walk back and get those steps in. It's up to you. Okay, and I'm just gonna double check my instructions. I think I know which way it's gonna want me to press. Yep, I'm pressing towards D, so I'm pressing towards my strip. Move these out of the way. All right, let's check and see how we did. I'm moving on to page two of the instructions. And it says this month's sections, I have two with C and A, yes. And then I have two pieces like this 
and two pieces like this. So those are all my pieces that I have for clue one. That's clue one. I have no idea what this quilt's going to look like when it's done. I'm so excited to find out. This was so fun to sew together with you. Leave me comments down below if you're sewing along, how this box coming together for you, if you're squaring up or not, because no judgment for me. Quilt the way you want to quilt. We're all going to have beautiful, warm, snuggly quilts at the end of this, and that's our goal right? So thanks for joining me here. I can't wait to see what you make and I can't wait to see your quilts. Um, my next step is going to be to figure out how I'm going to store these. We have 10 months together and I have these nice and pressed flat and I want them to stay nice and pressed flat. So um, figuring out how I'm going to keep these together. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and fold my instructions in half and then just tuck clue one in the instructions for clue one. And I'll write clue one here on the outside. Oh. Brand new fancy pen. There we go. Clue number one. And that way I can put this all in a bin or box with the other fabric pieces since I did get all of my fabric pieces at once, but I don't have all the clues yet, so I can't go sewing it all up at once. Thanks so much for watching, my friends. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Those of you who are new and who are sewing up the Nadia colorway with me, I hope you'll give me a subscribe. I have tons of quilting videos that are already up here on my channel and I have so many more coming with all different kinds of tips and tricks and projects and all things quilting here. So I hope you'll go ahead and give me a subscribe. I truly believe that I have some of the best quilters here in my community and I always love it when new quilters, whether they're just new to me or new to quilting, come join this community as well. So thanks again. I'm looking forward to next month when we work on clue two together. And I can't wait to see how this whole quilt turns out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you right here real soon. Bye for now.